Again, welcome to calculus course. And this lecture is covered derivative, and we are going to cover the sum and difference rules of derivative. So our main objective is to learn how to find the derivative of functions using the sum and difference rules. So we start with an example here. We have y equal to 3x plus 2s cubed. We already know how to use the power rule. So when we have a sum of two functions, let's say a sum of two terms here, 3s plus 2s cubed, all we need to do is to find the derivative of each term. Then we combine the equation if they are like terms. So the, by using the power rule, the derivative of 3x will give us 3. Why? Because x is raised to the power 1. So the exponent, we have to subtract 1 from it. So 1 minus 1 will give us 0. So s to the power 0 will give us 1. Then since the exponent is 1, we are going to multiply 1 by 3. And that will give us 3. So we get 3 times s to the power 0. And s to the power 0 again is 1. Now the next, we have exponent 3. So 3 times 2. So our new coefficient will be 6 then we have to subtract one from three. So the derivative of two s cubed is six s squared. Again, here we are using the power rule, which we cover in our previous lectures. Now, these are the sum and the difference rules. The only thing we should know about the derivative of the sum and difference rules is that if you have a sum of two functions, let's say f at s plus g at x, and we need to find the derivative of it, all we need to do is find the derivative of each term, then add them together or combine them. So we can see f at s plus g at, at x, the derivative of it will be the derivative of f at x and also the derivative of g at x, the sum together. The same thing applied to the difference. We have f at x minus g at x. The derivative of it will be the derivative of f at x minus the derivative of g at x. So let's see another example. But before that, we also said that the sum and the difference rules can be extended to the sum or difference of any finite number of functions. Our rule, we have only two functions, but it can be three or any amount. So for example, here, y equal to f at s plus g at s plus h at s. The derivative of y can be the derivative of f at x plus the der derivative of g at x plus the derivative of h at x. So the normal function can be any amount. So let's see the second example. We have g at x equal to negative half s to the power four plus three s cubed minus two x. And the question here says we should find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of this function, g at s function, at the point of negative 1 and negative 3, 2. So the first thing we need to do, we are looking for the equation. And this function, g at s, is a nonlinear equation. It's a polynomial equation because this is a polynomial function. But we are going to look for the tangent line. Tangent line is a straight line that we go across the g at s equation. So we know in order to find that equation of a straight line, the first thing we need is the slope. So we need to find the slope. Now finding the slope here means we are going to find the derivative of g at x. Then when we get the answer, we are going to substitute the value of x in the equation of g at x, the derivative of g at x and that will give us the slope. Then we can use the equation of a, a point slope form to come up with a new equation of the tangent line. So the first thing we need to do again, we find the derivative of g at x. Using the power rule here, we have four. So four times negative half will give me negative two, and we subtract one from four. So the derivative of negative half s to the power four will give me negative two s cubed. Next, another power rule. So three times three will give me nine. We subtract one from the exponent three, so that will give me two. So the derivative of three s cubed 
will be nine x squared. And minus two x, again, the exponent of x is one, so one minus one is zero. X to the power zero is one, and one times two is two. So the answer will be negative two. Now we have this, if the derivative of GRTS equation now, we are going to substitute the x value, which is negative one in the equation. And the answer we get will be our slope. So we substitute negative one cube and s squared will be negative one squared. And when we solve this question, we get two, the expression we have two. Now two is our slope. So next we need, now we have our slope. So this is our target line. We can see the point is negative one and negative three, two, and the slope is nine. Now we need to find the equation. So we decided to use the point slope form. This is basic algebra, how we get equation of a line. If a point is given, the slope is given. In this case, we find the slope and we have the point. So we can use the point slope line, which will be y minus y1 equal to m times s minus s1. S1 and Y1 is negative one and negative three, two. So we substitute those two values. The slope is nine, so we put that nine. Then we can simplify this expression. We have Y plus three by two equal to nine X plus nine. And we can form it as Y equal to nine X plus 15 by two, by taking the three by two to the right side. So next example, we are going to use the derivative to find the rate of change of a company's revenue with respect to time. Remember the concept of derivative is a rate of change. It can be mostly with respect to time and the time can be any unit. So our goal here, we are going to find the derivative of the revenue. So we can see this question, the revenue function is given. And uh, here they say from 2004 to 2009, the revenue are in millions of dollars for McDonald's can be modeled by this equation. And we can see that the time T is from four to nine, 2004 to 2009. So we represent 2004 as four, 2009 as nine. So that's the domain. So here we say where the T represent the year with t equal to four correspond to 2004. Now, at what rate was McDonald revenue changing in 2006? So we want to know 2006, which means when t equal to six. Now, rate of change, the first thing we need to do is to find the derivative of the function of the revenue. And later on, we're going to use the concept of marginal revenue. So a revenue and a marginal revenue will be the derivative of the revenue. So one way to answer this question is to find the derivative of the revenue model with respect to time. So we find the derivative of this term, we are going to use the power rule throughout. The constant rule will be zero. So we know a derivative of a constant value is zero. So 35, derivative of 35,493 will give me zero. Derivative of 11,493.t, the t will go away because the exponent is one. One minus one is zero and one times the value will be the same value. Then here we are going to get derivative, the t will be one, because it will be two minus one, the exponent. Then we multiply two by 2296.47. Then on this term, we have the exponent to be three. So we are going to multiply three by 130.769. Then the t will, uh, three will reduce to two. The exponent three will be two. So let's see the solution. So that's the solution here. When we multiply three by the value, this is what we have. The exponent reduced by one, the same thing, and the last, the constant value. So now our question is, we are looking for the rate of change in 2006. So here we say T equal to six. So rate of change concept again, is a slope. So we are going to substitute six into our derivative of our function. And that will give us, again, if we do the subtraction and multiplication, our final answer by calculator will give us 1941, approximately. 
So because R is measured in millions of dollars and T also is measured in years, it follows that the derivative of R, which is the R dt, is the measure in millions of dollars per year. So we say that by the end of 2006, McDonald revenue was increasing at the rate of about, the answer we get was 1941, but the unit is in millions and the time t is in years. So to interpret this, it will be $1941 million per year as shown in the figure here. So the whole concept here is that we can see when we are looking for a slope and we have a function, we can find the derivative of that function if it's a polynomial function. If it's already a linear function, then we can just find the slope of any linear function. Here we are using the target line on the nonlinear function. Now, the next question says we should find all the points on the graph of f at x equal to s cubed plus 3s squared minus 45x plus 4, where the target line is horizontal. So remember, when a straight line is horizontal, the slope is 0. When a, a line is vertical, there's no slope. The slope is undefined. So here we said the horizontal line has a slope equal to zero. So to find the desired point, we have to solve for the derivative of x equal to zero. So first we need to find the derivative of the function. Again, here we are going to use the power rule for s cubed that will give us 3s squared. The power rule for 3s squared will give us 6x. The power rule for 45s will give us 45 constant rule derivative of 4 will give us 0. So that will be our solution here. 3s squared plus 6s minus 45. Again, our previous lectures, we covered the power rules already. It's very important to know them. Mostly in derivative, the first rule that we learn always is the power rule and the constant rule. Then the sum and difference, then we will come to product and division rules. Then we go to the chain rule, higher derivative rules. So now we know the derivative of the function. Since we are looking for all the points on the graph of f at x and for zero, we equate the derivative of the function 3x squared plus 6x minus 45 equal to zero. Then we solve for x. And by looking here, at least the x value will be two because the highest degree x squared is two. We say the horizontal line has a slope equal to zero. So to find the desired point, we solve. First, we find the derivative of the f, then we equal the equation to zero. We solve for x. So here we do our factorization. Three is common. We have s squared plus 2s minus 15. And we can see if we can be able to factorize this. Find the two numbers. When you multiply, you get minus 15. When you combine, you get 2. And that happened to be 5 and 3. 5 times 3 is negative 15. 5 minus 3 is 2, positive 2. So this means our answer will be negative 5 and 0 and 3. So that's our final answer. So here we say to be negative 5 and f at negative 5. The f at negative 5 will be the original function f when s is negative 5. So that gives us negative 5 and 179. Then the second point, which was 3, 3 and f at 3, we use the original function. So that will give us 3 and negative 77. And that's the final solution. Mm -hmm. So again, in this lectures, we learned how to use the, the sum and also the difference of the derivative rules. Again, as we said, the previous lectures, we learned the power rule. So also we have to know that in order to use the sum and difference rules. So again, see in the next lectures, our next lecture will be the rules for multiplication and division. Thank you.